like making things, including YouTube videos and sewing things. Today is no different. I'm going to show you the process of how I made this very dress that I'm wearing as inspired by another dress that I was advertised. As has been established in previous videos, I'm a little bit of a tight ass. I don't like paying for something that I know I could maybe make myself and this dress is no exception. I also wanted to test out a new skill that I didn't yet know how to do, which was to do a rolled hem on my overlocker or serger if you're from America. So let's dive in and see how I go. First up, I looked up the description of the item that I was advertised, this dress from Dish, which is probably like, I don't know, maybe it's like quite trendy, I'm not sure, I'm not really a trendy kind of person, that's not really who I am, but I feel like this dress suited my style and I didn't really want to pay for it because it seemed pretty straightforward to me. So then I went to Trusty Spotlight and I found this jersey print fabric that is kind of in a similar sort of style. It's not as like bluey brown, it's kind of more like a galaxy vibe. It reminds me of those really high definition images from that new telescope thing. And I was like, cool, I'm, I can get on board with that. The tools that I'm using for this job are a bit of a tailoring chalk to mark out where I'm gonna cut my seam, my uh, gauge, which like gauge, sewing gauge, my sewing gauge, sewing gauge ruler. So it's a, it's a kind of ruler with this little red marker that you can set so you can trace out um, uh, a certain width and you don't have to always measure it every time you just put the, the red thing. Using my trusty tape measure, which was from Bunnings, I don't know why. And I'm also my sewing scissors and some thread and of course some pins to pin everything together. I got out my grey dress, my crusty, crusty, my trusty grey cotton on dress which I bought for $10 about 10 years ago and I've used it as a base for several different dresses that I've made since several, two. Uh, the neck is a bit higher and the arms are kind of cut in a little bit. So I needed to, when I was cutting out, I actually knew that I needed to sort of widen that a little bit uh, as I was going. For the neckline and the armholes, I didn't add any seam allowance because I knew that I was gonna do a rolled hem. If you don't have an overlocker and you're gonna do a conventional finishing to the armhole and the neckline, make sure you add a little bit of seam allowance. The fabric that I got has a bit of a repeating pattern. So I spent some time looking in the mirror to see which way I wanted the pattern to be running. It's a, it's a two-way stretch, so I didn't really think it was going to matter too much about which way I ended up laying the fabric. If it has a really obvious repeating pattern, sometimes garments can just look a little bit off, and if that pattern is kind of not in the right spot, then keep that in mind if you're using something that has a repeating pattern. So then I lay out on the floor the fabric, and I lay down the grey dress, and I check the length to see if I could get the length out of I measured the, how much extra I was going to need based off based off the grey dress to get it to my ankles and I, I double checked that by literally lying down on the floor. For this project I only used three pieces. I used a front piece and two back pieces and to get those pieces symmetrical uh, for the front piece you want to cut on the fold. So here I am just carefully folding the fabric along the groin line which is kind of like where the threads go and just making sure it's all even and that because it's a stretch things can get kind of wobbly sometimes so I just lay it all out and then I lay down the grey dress and started basically I didn't really draw anything I didn't really measure anything I just started cutting I would say that you can do this with a stretch fabric because it's going to be a little bit more forgiving. You can especially do this with an, a very abstract print because if you kind of fuck it up a little bit, no one's really going to know. To get the right shape of the armhole, I lay down this to the top that I was wearing as I was making this to get that shape. I measured the uh, I measured a seam allowance at the shoulders. I don't know why. I just kind of wanted to give myself a little bit of leeway in case I needed to take anything in. You can always take fabric off, you can't add it back on, it's much harder. And as you can see, I kind of just threw caution to the wind and went ahead and cut it. And I feel like this is a big step for me because for a long time, I was the kind of person that I really needed a pattern to follow. And if it was a deviation from the pattern, I just like couldn't cope because it's just how my brain is. If 
you've seen all of my videos, you'll know why. <laughs> you'll know why my brain is the way it is. So once I cut the front piece, I put it to the side and then I lay out, I folded the dress the other way and I laid out um, the gray dress again to cut the back pieces. Because there's two of them, so you don't need to cut them on the fold because there's a back seam and two side seams. Because I knew that I was going to need to re-thread my overlocker and change some settings to do the rolled hem, I decided to finish off the edges of the front and back pieces at the side seam with the like existing normal thread so that I wouldn't have to like re-thread it again because re-threading an overlocker is a pain. And I guess if you don't have an overlocker and you need to finish side seams then you can do a zigzag stitch or some machines have like a pretend overlock stitch just it does the trick and I have to confess that I have made plenty of garment for without finishing the edges because it wasn't on the instructions why don't people tell you to do that stuff then came the next challenge which was setting up the overlock machine to do the rolled hem to do that I followed a tutorial that I found just by googling my type of machine and rolled hem. There's a very short but very informative video that you can follow if you have a different kind of overlock machine. Then I recommend googling it. The company might even put out one themselves. I also referenced another webpage that had more detailed instructions about how to do the threading and what settings to put everything on. Threading the overlocker took a really long time, the thread kept breaking, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. But I got there in the end, it took like probably about like an hour longer to finish this dress. It was really should have just been a simple sew, but it just took much longer than I thought. I had cut everything out like a couple of days before, and I thought I could just like whiz through it. But I learned my lesson to, to, to just. Yeah. Then after a long, long time, I did a little test run and it worked. And so then I could proceed with the rest of the sew. It's a miracle that it's working. Absolute miracle. So I finished off, I finished off the, I finished off the edges of the side seams and the back center back seam with the regular overlocker settings. So this is the centre back seam, so I sewed the two back pieces together, right side to right side, and I left an opening at the bottom, so I needed that slit so you can actually walk, because there are some dresses out there that are just like fully to the ground and they're like knitted, and it's just a tube, and if you don't have any, if you don't have a slit at the back, then you're just going to be walking around like a penguin, which is cute, but it's not very like efficient. Then I did the rolled hem on the neckline, on the on the top, on the front, on the front and the back. Then I put the dress together with all the other bits and bits and pieces. Once I'd done that, I decided to throw the dress on and establish where I needed to put the, the shoulder seams. And <laughs> so I put it on over my top and very uh, awkwardly tried to pin the shoulder pieces together. So I did that so that I knew how much, because I, I, I left like so much, I left seam allowance there, which I didn't need. So I knew I needed to like take that off. The next step that I did was to finish off the armhole edges before I did the shoulder seams. So I marked where I needed to make the shoulder seams, but I knew that I needed to finish the armhole edge before I did the shoulder seam to then finish on the outside with the rolled hem, the shoulder seam. So I just went on the overlocker and did both of the armhole edges to finish them off. Then I pinned the shoulder seams together at the marking that I had made when I tried it on. And I actually, I think I just went ahead and overlocked those two pieces together with the rolled hem. I think this is where I came un unstuck a little bit. Um, what I should have done is actually basted that together or just sewn the seam and then overlocked it because things kind of got slippery and they slipped around a little bit, but I fixed it in the end.
And once that was all done, the dress was basically finished. So I tried it on and I realized that I had cut the shoulder seams so wide that it was really high up around my neck, which wasn't the look I was going for. The original dress has like a very um, open, a very high sort of boat neck vibe. So I decided to just cut off, I think I cut off like an inch maybe, and then I just re-sewed, I just re-finished that neck, the neck line. I just refinished the neckline with the rolled hem. That's what I'm trying to say. Also, as I was filming this, my camera was kept running out of battery. So <laughs> I kept like charging the battery for a minute and then recording a bit and then charging the battery while I like finished off something else. I also ran out of battery, so I couldn't record what I did to finish the hem and to finish the slit. So what I did to finish the slit was I just rolled up, I'm just gonna show you. Because that, because that edge was finished already with the overlocker, all I did was like fold it over and I just stitched it. Then when I got to the top of the slit, I just went back up and forth a few times, forward and backwards, turned the corner and came back down the bottom. And then to finish the hem, the hem was actually right on the selvage of the fabric. So I just kind of let the natural I just let the natural roll of the fabric fold it up twice and I just stitched along the bottom. Then I wore it and I felt amazing. But then we went to Japan and I took this dress with me and I was really excited to wear it everywhere. Um, and then I washed it. I am a prime culprit of never washing the fabric before I make something, which is bad. You really should wash your fabric, but I just never, I just never do it. I think I've done it once. Anyway, when it, when it washed, the dress kind of got really stretched um, and then it was really long and so I kept kind of tripping over it and to get around that while I was traveling, I literally like hoiked it up and I tucked it into my bra strap. You can't really tell because of the fabric, but it, it was uncomfortable and impractical because I was like half tripping over all the time. So then I, just the other day, I decided to try it on and it was draping around the floor. So I, I figured I needed to take off like maybe two or three inches and I just went ahead and cut it off. My hot tip to rehem something, rather than measuring out everything and making lots of markings, make the first cut and just keep folding that piece that you've cut back along itself and just follow the line and you'll get an even cut that whole way around. Then I just literally rolled up the bottom and stitched it again and here we are. What I love about this dress is that it's really versatile. I made it in late April so things were cooling down here in Sydney. Then we went to Japan where things were warming up and it was really practical from that perspective even though it was kind of quite hot on some days. And now it's the middle of June and I can still wear this dress because it's long, gives me enough warmth and it's versatile as a style with different kinds of shoes. Here I'm wearing it with boots but in Japan I wore it with my black sandals and it looked chic as fuck. I would love to know if you follow this tutorial to make a similar style of dress. Let me know in the comments below. Send me a picture on Instagram. Tag me on Instagram at unsolicited step. Make sure you subscribe, please. It really means a lot to me if you subscribe and like the video. Really, like, you have no idea how much it means to a YouTube creator when someone subscribes. I have been me, you have been you. This has been a wonderful time. I hope that you learned something about sewing and I hope that, I hope one day I can inspire one person to get out their mom's machine and, and ask their grandma how, how, to, how to do things. It's like, it's the first step to unleashing the endless possibility. I'll see you next time. I love you. Bye.